Julia, I have a limerick for you. God, I love limericks. There once was a woman named Child who made sausages spicy and mild. Those tubular treats, stuffed with mystery meat, made her friend and relation go wild. That's a wonderful <laughs> one. Oddly enough, I have one for you, Jack. Oh, good. There once was a young man from Lyon whose knife work was exceedingly bon. <laughs> His charcuterie was something to see, and his sausages weren't bad either. Well, today we're going to show you how to stuff sausages and how to make pâté. In your own kitchen. Happy cooking. Bon appétit. This is going to be an all-purpose sausage mixture for stuffing into cases or making into pâtés. We have this one, you know, that you can buy at the market. This is beautiful. This is done with beef middle. I mean, it's no, about case, two and a half case. inches. No. But it's quite pricey. When you do it this way, I tell you, it's very inexpensive. Yeah. It has to be well seasoned, so we put two and a half teaspoon of salt. And this is one and a half pounds of ground pork. Exactly, yes. What did we say? About, about three quarters of a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Yeah. I'm giving you a pinch of sugar, like half a teaspoon of sugar. All and right. I'm giving you a little pinch here of the potassium nitrate. This is saltpeter. And if you don't want to put it, it's fine, but you won't have the nice, beautiful red, mm -hmm. you know, that you have in a, in a frankfurter and a pastrami and corned beef and so forth, you know? I think it's slightly a preservative. Yes, it does, yes. So, you, you put in your everything? white wine. I want to put yeah. in two tablespoons yeah, about, of pinjolis. Yes. Fine nuts, yes. I'm going to put good. in a tiny bit more because right. that's nicer. We're going to do two, two truffles. Oh, good. We're going to make them julienne. All right, so well. And these are very. Those are the black truffle. Very expensive. I thought I was supposed to julienne them. Well, yeah, julienne that's these. what I did. That's chopped, you little julienne. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to follow your recipe. This is your recipe now. My recipe is there. So in my recipe now, I'm putting a couple of tablespoons of red wine in mine. It's more of a country, a bit more assertive taste, you know? I have basically the same salt, paper, and so forth. And I'm putting about two, three tablespoons of pecan, coarsely chopped. You could have pistachio, you could have walnut, you know, in there, it'd be fine. And you could have no nuts at all, it's fine also. And inside, I'm putting a little clove of garlic, which you want to crush If you're and making shove. a big batch, you can certainly do this in your big, heavy-duty mixer. So a very fine puree of garlic. That's it. And now we're going to taste it and see how it is, because you want to make sure that you have enough seasoning in it. Yes. And you're going to taste we're gonna the toast. mixture? Just going to taste Well, it. during that time, I wanted to show you the casing. This is a casing who usually come in salt. This has to be put in water, as I did here, and you should run it under the faucet, you know, and this is what I'm going to do here. What happened here, as you can see your sausage, you want to fill it up to wash the inside, as well as the outside, and soak it in water. And you can see the side of this one, you know, which is about an inch and a half, kind of transparent. So you wash the inside this way, and soak it out in water again, and then it's basically ready to use at that point. How is the meat doing? Good? It's feeling it to turn over. It smells good. And we're going to use those strange-looking 
sausage stuffer, you know. This is a, an oldie. That's I very this old. One. Yes, my gosh, look at this one. It's a very simple thing. It's a funnel, you know, which goes into this. And you, of course, fix it up to the end. And you don't have to have one of these at all, but and then push it's more fun. In, right? Now we're going to taste this, Jacques. OK. Mm. It's good. It's slightly over seasoned, which is the way it was by the time it's going to be mixed mm -hmm. either with the potato salad and cured and so forth. And we're going to use the modern stuffer here. Yes. Here with my impeccably clean hands. That's you really cool. have to get yourself into sausage making if you try to use spoons and things. It's very difficult, I think. So, what happened after? You want to put it this way? Two more truffles in Two there. Two more truffles, OK. And start cranking it this way. And at that point, you have to insert, of course, the opening of your sausage it's there. It's very important that it be wet, or you're going to have yes, trouble yes, slipping absolutely. it off. You can put quite a lot. Oh, well, this machine anything. is expensive, that other one that was just a handheld. Or you could use a pastry bag. Here we are, sausage that's coming that's out That's really of it. wonderful. Yes, isn't it? That's it, that basically. And then after, you can do your link of sausage by folding it in this way and again. But I think that for the people who want to do it maybe in an easier way, we're going to show them a way by hand, right? Good. So what I have, I'm going to do this one this way. I put aluminum foil as well as Parchment paper. And here we're going to form a sausage. Now, this is really useful to see. Form a sausage. I mean, it's very easy. You just form the well, sausage by you hand. You can just make these into little pâtés and sauté them individually. What you would want to do at that point, this has to be cured for at least three days, you know, under refrigeration. And it no. will develop the taste and the color that you want. Mm -hmm. So you press it into a sausage, and at that point, it would be like the store-bought sausage that we show you, which is about two and a half inches thickness, you know? So you can form it this way, you know, into a nice sausage. So you do it first in this, and that can cure right in there for a, a couple of days. In know? the fridge? Yes. So let's pretend that now it's been curing for several days, mm -hmm. and we put it to cook in a water which is about the right temperature, right? And that's about 180 or at the simmer. And at that point, you would put that directly this way to push it in there. It has to mm -hmm. have enough water to be immersed. And I use a lid to put on top of it to apply it so that it stay under the water. And it has to poach at that temperature for about 35, 40 minutes, depending on the size of your mm -hmm. sausage. You know? Good. Now we're going to make a sausage in brioche crust. The brioche is an egg dough. It makes a very nice bread and it makes a very nice crust. Uh -huh. And this is the yeast thing. So I have dry active yeast. I have one package in here that's slightly less than a tablespoon. So you want three oh. tablespoons of water. Three tablespoons of water in mm -hmm. here, okay. The water cold or lukewarm? Lukewarm. The tap, yes. And then we want a nice pinch of sugar, which will help it work. And a little pinch of flour. Just take pinch some of flour. from there. Okay, that's it. And then, and then we're going to let it you stir want to mix it, it And this is how it looks. This is, you know, when it's foamed up just like that, you know that his is ready to go. Yes. I think it's awful you get it all made and the dough hasn't mm. risen and it's because the yeast was killed by hot water or something. This has a wonderful aroma of yeast. You can really see it working mm -hmm. here. OK. And now we want three and a half cups of flour. And the way I measure flour in my recipes are always you dip the cup into the flour until it's overflowing, level it off, and you don't press it down. Or, because if you yeah. tap it down, you could add a whole other tablespoon of flour and your measurements would That's be right. off. So there are three and a half cups of flour in here and here. one and a half teaspoons regular table salt. OK, so here you are. And then we have one and a half sticks of chilled butter. That and the flour are going to blend together. 
We want butter broken up into rough granules. Let's turn it off now and take That's a it. look. That's perfect. Let's check it. See, they're just very small pieces of butter in there. That's good. And now we want four eggs one and one three. third cup of milk. Then that's going to dribble into here. What about here. The, the yeast? You want to put it in there? Yes, or? that can go in there in too. There also, okay. So hold the yeast, of course. You want to beat that up a bit. Mm-hmm. Good. You put it on. Full blast. Full blast. Okay. Here we are. Look at it. That, that seems pretty good, I think. Yes, I think it looks terrific. Mm -hmm. You just have that type of elasticity that you need to. Yeah. And uh, so now we're ready to take it out. Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. We'll put it in this bowl. All right. I have some that's already risen. I like to give two rises because I think it gives more body to the dough and more flavor. But then in any case, it needs deflating. And this is not what they call punch down. It's really flattened. Oh, you crush the air out of it by flattening it. Yeah, and then you turn it. And that redistributes the yeast for the second rise. At about 75 degrees, it'll probably take an hour and a half to two hours. A couple of hours, mm -hmm. right? And then we have one fully risen for you, Jack. Here is the dough. It's flattened looks, now. Looks nice. And here is the sausage. Can you undo that for mm -hmm. me? Now, this sausage is raw and it's going to cook in its brioche crust. Yeah. So we're going to press the brioche. It should be there about you rectangular, you know? That looks nice. It smells good. So we. You want to put. Mm. That's what's that's good. You want to put that sausage on top of the... Uh, I'll let you put it on, because you yeah, know... Yeah, go ahead, right in the middle. Beautiful, with the uh, truffle that and all lovely. that. that now, you know what I do here, which and is... And this is how thick, would you say? It's oh, about I would a quarter say it's a of an good, inch. Uh, it's a good half, half inch. About I think it's three eighths pretty... inch, maybe. OK, three eighths inch. All right. <laughs> so here, you put a little bit of uh, flour on top of it. And this, actually, is to make the brioche stick to the sausage. Yeah. So we press it this way here. I need an egg to wash it. That will it stick it together here. Yeah. Here we are. And then the other side should kind of overlap. And then the end of it, you can, if you want, press it a little bit this way to extend it. Can we brush this? This makes thing? an awfully nice dish for cocktails or yes. a lovely summer lunch with uh -huh. a nice salad. This one here. Here we are. So it is thicker on the bottom now, so you want to turn it upside down because mm -hmm. it's going to sink a little bit as it, uh, as it proof, you know? I think we'll put it okay, there. Okay, this is going to proof again. Yeah, this has to proof. Well, of course it does, because it's the yeast dough. So we have a nice... That looks this very way. Nice. So we can brush it now again with the egg wash. It makes a lot of difference to give a nice shiny crust. We can mark the top, you know, if you want, with the back of a knife. Mm -hmm. Give a little bit of a design this way. And maybe we do a couple of chimney, right? Yes, it has to, otherwise it'd be steaming when it baked. Right. And what I like to put is a piece of aluminum foil around, mm -hmm. you know, to Good hold idea. it while it's cooking this way. Keep its shape. Yes, at least at the beginning. And I think I put a piece of string holding it a little bit. And this has to proof again now. That'll be about an hour, an hour and a half. About an hour, yes. But for the time being, I have one which is kind of... Oh, uh, good. Proofed, you know. So how do we know that bit. it's proofed enough? Well, you can smell it to start with. I'm going mm -hmm. to put a little bit of this on top mm -hmm. and put it back in the oven. What I like to put on top is a bit of bread crumb also. Give a I'll brown it nicely. Nice look, yes. And then I think you can tell by feeling also 
Yeah, that is pretty okay. soft. Spongy and soft, you know? Yes. So shall we put it in the oven? Okay. For 375 degrees, and that will take a good 45 minutes about. Okay, and what we'll do, after about 15, 20 minutes of cooking, we can take that piece of aluminum mm -hmm. folder, and by then it will hold its shape. Now we're gonna do a pâté. This is a very festive type of French meatloaf, but it has wine and other things in it, and a variety of meats. But if you think of it as a meatloaf, then you won't be afraid of it, will you? Yes, and it's very expensive when you buy that into specialty store, it costed oh. in fortune. So we're gonna show you how to make it very easily. This is ground pork, and, we have and the ground pork will have a little more fat than we would have in the sausage, because with that we're putting a very lean ground veal, you know? And of course, if you don't have veal, and Julia, we, you can we can use, use... You could use ground turkey. Ground turkey would do something similar to this. So this That's is... That's about three quarters of a pound each right. of a veal or turkey that's ground. Right, we have about two and a half pound of meat. So in there, we have the salt and pepper, just to be. We have chopped shallots. You got about a third of a cup of them. We you? have a bit of chopped garlic. And we have some dry mushroom in it, and those are porcini in Italian, what we call sep in France, which are a dry wild mushroom, which is very strong. And I put it dry because the meat has to marinate several days, so they are going to reconstitute. We put some pistachio in there for color as well as taste. This is, the proportions aren't of great importance. Cognac? Must be the same proportions that we used for the sausage meat. Yes. A, a couple of tablespoons of cognac, and I need some of your white wine over there. There's a little white wine. Thank you. About, I would say, a third of a cup of white wine, at least. And then in this, now it's highly seasoned, I have some chicken liver, and in those chicken liver, a dash of salt and pepper and a bit of a cognac on top of it. And Julia is doing little strip of very lean veal and ham, yes. So and now... The reason for the strips is we're going to mold this into a loaf, loaf shape. And then when you cut it across, you'll see these nice pieces of veal and ham. Sometimes you can put an egg in it, some people do, sometimes a little bit of uh, starch. This has to marinate or macerate at least 48 hours to three days, you know? And I also put a little pinch of, of saltpeter again in there For to the get color. the right color, yes. Oh, and I have my seasoning here that I almost forgot, and that I put that into a little coffee grinder, and I have a couple of bay leaf in it, I have some clove, I have all spice, mm -hmm. and fresh thyme. That, of course, will give you a lot of taste. This is our the secret seasoning ingredient, and then you can express yourself in that way, because from cumin to anything you want, you can work out your old spice, you know? Now, you can cook that into a loaf like this. This is a pâté mold cast iron. Or, this. or you can use a bread pan. Yes, and you can line it up or not line it up with what we have here. This is called coal fat. You could get this in an Italian butcher shop, or you can have your butcher order it. Yes. Or just not use it, because it isn't necessary, but it's kind of fun to have. And uh, C-A-U-L, that's the coal fat. And it... It's the membrane that holds all the pig's inner organs. So, this could be marinated in the mold itself or outside. So what we do, we're going to do layer here. You want to put some of your strip of veal as I'll well. I'll alternate with veal and ham. So I put a small layer again on top, and in the middle of that, so yeah, we're going to put the chicken liver here. That'll be nice. And on each side, we can oh, put can more, each side we more can of this. A bit of ham there. That's it. So a pate is really a question of having a good recipe. And it's an assembling procedure, but it's not particularly difficult to do. More of our meatloaf on top. I mean, a pâté like that, big party. I usually always do pâté around the Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And when I have a, a couple of pâté I do at home, when I ground it, I do two pâté. And I use it during the holiday because you can keep it for, of course, like a week and a half in your refrigerator. Slice it, and it does a lot of party around that time, you know? I put a little more of that on top. There's some ham, maybe, mm -hmm. in the middle. And I finish with the rest of the meat here, which I'm going to spread on top. 
It All looks right. like so much meat, but it fits very nicely in, doesn't it? Yes, yes. And then, finally, you want to bring back your beautiful leshy. Which is man. beautiful, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And maybe the finished touch on top, I put a couple of bay leaves. Mm -hmm. That's like always that. a nice touch, I think. And maybe a bit of dry thyme, you know? This, of course, you wouldn't want to cook it now. I said you let it marinate a few days. You put that, of course, in the double boiler. That, because that has to cook one of the secrets of pate. I mean, this is a double boiler, Ben yes. Marie. In the seasoning, it has to be well seasoned. The second one, the amount of fat, it has to have a certain amount of fat to really, and the second lead to cook it slowly, a long time. If you cook it too fast, the whole fat melts. Yeah. And you change the whole texture, you know? Cover the terrine tightly with a double thickness of foil, and then off it goes to a preheated 325 degree oven. Bake it for about an hour and three quarters until your meat thermometer reads 155 degrees. Now here's one that's all ready to eat. It's cool and unmolded, and it just smells wonderful. And as you can see here, I have a beautiful red color of a pate mm. with the liver well, that, in, that's the, what in the that, center um, of it. And this, of course, has to do with a little bit of the saltpeter. You can see the pistachio in there. Mm -hmm. And you can very faintly see the chicken, the chicken liver. livers yeah. and the ham and things. But this makes a very pretty slice. Yes. And this, of course, very often is served. You can have black olives. You can have the cornichon, which is those small French gherkin in vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could put some around. This way, that would be. I'll put some, I'll put some I put olive on the other side. With this, of course, you can have a good French mustard, a bread, bread, yes. with a great, a great crunchy type of country bread. With that, with a pate, you have a picnic. You have a, a dry white wine. You serve it at the table. You can have a Beaujolais ordinary wine. You can mm -hmm. have a more pungent. Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, anything goes there. Now here is the star of the sausage, Joe. That's the That's saucy it. son en brioche. Right. The center of it, I mean, look at that mm. brioche, you know? Mm. Oh boy, I can smell the truffle. Now this you know? is the same sausage meat we've been seeing, it's just it's all in different costumes. Yes. But they're a beautiful. Boyosh like this. Yeah, that would be a first course. I would have a piece like this, yes. You would. Right. Now ahead. I'm going to cut a little piece just for you and me to taste, yeah? Here, mm -hmm. here, eh? I can smell the truffle. They are good. Mm -hmm. mm. But it is nice to have the bread with it, I think. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Good. There, now we'll never have to buy any sausage again. Bon appétit. Happy cooking. And here's to you, Jacques. That was a great to show. You. Thank you for doing it. Presentation of KQED San Francisco.